connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. And greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, even as the opening statement said there, because this is Outreach Connection. I'm Gary Schluckebeer, your host. And Outreach Connection meaning we're reaching out and to perhaps connect those who don't have a connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, or perhaps at one time did have a connection and uh, you're not for sure if you want to come back or not. I was talking to somebody just yesterday, as a matter of fact, of they were have lived for the Lord and brought up in in homes with a, a home with the with the Lord, and and they've hit a hard place in their life. And they were telling me, "Well, God doesn't answer prayer anymore. There's no sense in praying for me." Well, that's not our God. He has, he has his timetable. He has his ways far beyond our understanding and everything. But I want to read to you a scripture verse in our opening of the program here today. It's from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And it says, And he, meaning the Lord himself, gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And he gives a reason why. Verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So there's two reasons there. For the equipping of the saints or believers <clears throat> to be able to, to take this gospel message out, to know how to do it, <clears throat> and then also for to edify. I don't know about you, the body of Christ. I love to be edified. I love it when somebody gives me a compliment or something. But the best compliment we can have when we have a compliment from the Lord Jesus Christ. He will edify us through His Holy Spirit. Well, let me introduce you to my guest uh, because I'm talking all about the, the, one of the main fivefold ministries of the church here. One of the main ministries of the church here is evangelism. And I've got with me Evangelist Martin Carroll here today around the table. Thank you, brother, for being with me here. Thank you very and, much. And uh, we're going to delve into your ministry. We're going to delve into what's it like to be an evangelist. So, and I'm saying all of that, and I know there's a lot of groundwork that has sure, to be sure. uh, what brought you, how God called you, how God led you. And as we build into this, because uh, you've got a special message yes, that God's yes. laid on your heart, or you wouldn't be an evangelist. Right, right. That's true. That's yeah. true, Gary. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Uh, uh, the ministry that I actually God started with me was back, started back in about 1993, mm -hmm. uh, called Revival for Christ Ministries. Okay. Uh, I was saved at eight years old. Uh, but as people go on throughout the years, you know, right. of course, you go back and forth, yes. especially in high school and, right. and college, and everybody does different things. But the God pressed it on my heart really strong that every time I would see somebody walk by, I would always wonder, what's going to happen when they die? Mm. What, where are they going to go? And yeah. you and I discussed this earlier. Yeah. And evangelism I at the time uh, when I was growing up I heard of Billy Graham you know and I'd seen all his itinerant evangelism uh, conferences and I kept thinking I, there's no possible way I felt the same way Moses did God there's no possible way I'm gonna end up like that <laughs> yeah. and so I just started doing things small and I and I said something's not working right I don't know maybe I'm doing something wrong and then one day, it just it just all happened at one time. I said, he said, once you surrender everything, then you'll realize what true heart evangelism is mm -hmm. all about. Okay, you realize that, and once you give it all to me, he said, because I'm not asking for just some of it here and some of it there. Mm -hmm. You give it all to me, then you will see people through my eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's how we have to look uh, at right, people. Right, right. You know, I. 
Whenever I get angry at somebody or something, right. or uh, I got to be careful here. But anyway, we all do that, just like we, like you were talking about before. We may be saved at an early age, mm -hmm. but ooh, there comes those times right. of wavering a little bit. Right. But uh, how we look at people must be through the eyes of Jesus. Yes. Yes. And how do I see that person who I'm angry with? Right. The love of Christ. Go ahead. I'm and, sorry. Well, he. Uh, Jesus was our best example as an evangelist. Uh, oh, yeah. Disciples, of course, they were great. Philip, you know, Philip, sure. uh, the evangelist. Uh, called an evangelist. Uh, but Jesus himself, I mentioned this to you earlier, uh, he had such compassion. Even though he was the son of God, he was in man's form. He still, he wanted to show us that even in the human body flesh, you still spiritually wise, spiritual wise have that compassion that you need to have Amen. for the people of God uh, for yeah. the people of the world right. and he says I didn't come into this world to condemn it I came into that they may be saved John 3 17 right yeah. and so here here he is looking over Jerusalem and he's saying oh Jerusalem Jerusalem and he wept and I, I've questioned myself and questioned people so many times and I've spoke to you about this he said, when's the last time you've seen somebody standing on the street or they're not looking exactly the way you think they should look or they're not saying exactly the things in church the way you think they should say things? It's not us. When's the last time you actually looked at them and had those tears in your eyes and compassion for them mm -hmm. to say, are they really saved? Mm -hmm. Are they really born again? They need God. They need God in their life. Because we walk by people all the time. Yeah. And you never see them in church. Uh, only thing you see them do is either mm -hmm. smoking this or drinking that or mm -hmm. cussing this or cussing somebody else out or doing yeah. something else. You know, brother, let me interrupt you a minute. Okay. But I just, I had a thought the other day. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was, um, and you see these big crowds on television, mm -hmm. you know, right. walking down um, Chicago, uh, New York City, for right. example. Here's these huge crowds of people. God knows every one of them right, and right. where they're at in their life with Him or what they're doing in their life. Mm -hmm. And when we think about there are 7 billion plus people alive on the earth today, right. Right. God knew them all, knows right. them all, right. <clears throat> um, even before the foundations of the world. Were True. Right. Isn't True. that awesome? It's great. It's what great. A God. That, what a God. That, and that's the reason why I've, I've told people that before. I said, you know, how do I know God wants me to be saved? How yeah. do I know that? And he said, uh, you know, the scripture says, many are called, few are chosen. Yeah. Well, how do I know it's God wants me? Well, how do you don't know that? Yeah. How do you don't know? I mean, you don't really know for sure. I said, for one thing, do you want to take the chance in your lifetime that when you have that last breath, do you want to really take the chance and say, uh, am I going to go to heaven or not? Mm -hmm. Do you really want to take that chance? And or while you're on earth to have a really, truly loving relationship with somebody that really does care? Well, everybody's called. Whosoever will. Right. It's a, it's a choice, of course, as we know. Right. You know, and, and as an evangelist, you have that heart, mm -hmm. that compassion. <clears throat> and that compassion is part of the greater works yes. that Jesus said you would do yes. because I go back to my Father right. through the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, we have that compassion for others. I hurt for them. And God only knows. And that's what your work is. Right. And uh, <clears throat> like I referred to a, uh, a sermon I preached one time about the lady that met Jesus at the well. Uh, Jesus had to leave Judea and go to Galilee. Okay, and when he went, every Jew at that time didn't have anything to do with Samaritans at all. Okay, right. they didn't want anything to do them, do with them. It's kind of like our world today. There are certain people that people don't want anything to do with. Racist. Racism. Mm -hmm. uh, I, fair to say, should I say politicians? You know, but yeah. I don't know if I. <laughs> well. But we don't want anything to do with certain people, so we yeah. we just distance ourselves. Mm -hmm. So Jesus had to go to Galilee. But instead of taking the route everybody else took, going all the way around Samaritan, stay Samaria, away from them. Yeah. He's, stay away from them, he went straight through. He says, I must need go through mm -hmm. Samaria. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you think about it and say, well, why does he must need? Well, there's something going to happen 
we already know that. He's going to speak to a woman. But there's another message there. Why must he go through that way? Because everybody else takes the easy way out. Yeah. Everybody else takes that easy way out. Why do we have to go from, let's just say, uh, 6 and Broadway, why do we have to go straight up Broadway to get somewhere on the other side of the town? Why can't we go straight up 6th Street, go down College, and go down all these other back roads, or even on the south side, go down these back roads, mm -hmm. and instead, we go the other routes, <coughs> go around, and say, I, don't, I want to avoid that area. I want to avoid it. Why? If you let the Spirit of God speak to you, there's a reason why you need to. Right. Because there may be somebody that you need to talk to. Exactly. And we don't know that, but the right. Holy Spirit does. And that's the problem now, led. is that instead of being led and <clears throat> surrendering all and letting the Holy Spirit <clears throat> guide us, we step back in fear and, <clears throat> and decide on our own what to do. <clears throat> and then say, God bless this. Yeah. yeah. Okay? And the thing is that the woman at the well <clears throat> was a whosoever. Right. Right. That's right. And the people she went to talk to in town. Yep. What, what, you know, and she told him. She told somebody him, said she was the first evangelist. That she was yeah. the first one. She, a she, woman evangelist. Right, you know? a woman yeah. evangelist. She, she actually yeah. came back and says, come, mm. tell, come see a man that yeah. told me everything about myself. And, but like I've told people before, that well <clears> itself, <throat> she brought an empty pot every time to that well to get filled over and over again. And today's society is always bringing something empty back to get filled over and over again. And where are they going to? Not just the water well. They're going someplace where, Amen. oh, there's yeah. alcohol there to fill yeah. me. There's uh, yeah. drugs to fill me. There's money. There's gambling. There's this. There's mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Just something to fill that pot again. Right. And, and it always goes empty on them. Yeah. Let, let, let's talk about this mm -hmm. um, with evangelism. Mm -hmm. Because there's... <clears throat> I think sometimes the church needs to be evangelized. Yes, yes. Because uh, you and I were talking once again before the program a little bit, and the word that I use an awful lot in in uh, my teachings and everything is the word desensitization. Yes. In our day and age, with television, <clears throat> with the TV shows that are shown, the commercials that are shown, right. Right. and and it's just it's it's shameful that our what our little children see right. on primetime television, we have been, and even as adults now, we have been desensitized. The saints, the right. Christians, right. the disciples of Christ, we have been des desensitized. Right. And sometimes there's a hunger there that's been lost. Right. Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, if you look at, if you look at people who will go into church and they'll listen to a message from a pastor, and they'll say, oh, he's preaching on this again, okay? And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, You're okay. and they're preaching on a message this, this way. And then they say, well, let's go downstairs and we'll talk. And then they talk about something they've seen on TV or something like that. There's not that pure holiness anymore to mm -hmm. where they feel like, oh, I've really, I've kind of burnt it off a little bit to where I'm not really convicted anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're not really surrendered enough yeah. to God to understand that this I should get this out of my life mm -hmm. that's one of the things I should need to get out of my life mm -hmm. and that's why he says until you're ready to give it all up I can't use you yeah. I can't use you and you're and you're trying to figure out well why don't I have that fire anymore why don't I have this why mm -hmm. don't I have that and God's there telling you the whole time the reason why you don't have that hunger there anymore is because you're allowing all those things mm -hmm. into your life to get in your way. And all those things takes up time which yes. of our life, which takes us away from spending time yes. in the Word, yes. the Bible. Yes. You know, we, here in America, we're so blessed, we take it for granted. Yes, yes. And we, I mean, you take the Scripture, uh, scripture of God and you take prayer. I was saying this to somebody this morning. You take the Scripture of God and you take prayer and you say, oh, I have to force myself to sit down and read the Word of God or pray. I have to force myself. And I said, why do I have to do that? Why do I feel that way? But you didn't have to force yourself to get on Facebook. 
You didn't have to force yourself to That's get good. on TV. That's good. Uh, to watch TV or eat your yeah. breakfast or do something else. For yeah. You didn't have to force yourself to do all that. Yeah. Only because... The reason why that's happened is because you've allowed Satan to take a foothold in your life. Yeah. And because of that, that's the reason why you're losing that hunger. And you know what I call that? You, you brought up a, a, a thought in my mind, which I have thought before. Oh, I've got to sit down and just relax a little bit. Well, what's that mean? <laughs> right. I, I would rather relax in the presence of the Lord right, right. You know, than any place else. You know, it's like, once again, the scripture verse that I read at the beginning out of uh, number 12 where it says, for the edifying. For the edifying. Okay, yes. I want to be edified, okay. I'm going to, wh why do we relax? Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn on the TV to relax. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with the stuff that we see on there, right. are we really <sighs> relaxing? You know, is it edifying? There, right. There's where, where it, I want to it's, go. It's basically, it it's not going to be edifying for no. doing all those because it's just like the old computer term, you know. Trash garbage in, in, garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same. Thing. The same exact thing. And uh, until mm -hmm. you realize, let, let's just let's just be flat out honest about this whole thing. What are you doing in your life for God? What are you doing? Oh well, I am getting closer to God. That's what He wants. He wants intimate relationship. He says, "Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you." And on and on and on. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing. Yeah. Okay, but what is going on? Satan is drawing everybody away from God, yeah. even in the church. Yeah. And he says, especially in the church, right. and they don't even know it. Right. He says, I don't have to worry about the church. They just fight with each other, and yeah. I don't have to worry about that. He said, but. They fight with each other, and they're not going to pay attention to the people that are lost. Mm -hmm. They're just going to go ahead and just do what they want to do, and I don't have anything to worry about. Mm -hmm. Whereas, instead of us sitting back in church, we need to edify and lift up each other and say, okay, look, let's join hands. Let's get out and do it. Let's go. Let's mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I've always wondered to myself, what mm -hmm. in the world is wrong? Why? Do you, are, are you scared? Are you scared? You you weren't scared to say yeah. to the cashier at Hy-Vee that uh, you didn't take the right coupon, yeah, or something like that. But <laughs> it's a and that took work, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fear of people think that I don't know the scripture right. I don't do that. Yeah. The whole thing comes down to one thing: is that you don't trust God enough. Yeah, you don't trust God enough to lead you to lead other people to Christ. Oh. You don't but, have enough trust in but God. Martin, <clears throat> I'm a Christian. What are you talking about? Well, I go to church every Sunday. <laughs> it, what, isn't that what the, that's isn't what that they made? that's what they say? But I, like I said, <laughs> when you came in here and I came in here, we sat in these chairs. We didn't think anything of it. No, we didn't think anything of it. And uh, who was to say? Maybe the chair would have broken, but we didn't think anything of that. No. We had faith and trust that the chair was going to hold us up. Right. That's the same way we should be every day with God. Say, well, I'm going to go speak for God today and right. say something to somebody. Lead somebody right. to me or lead me to somebody. And here's a scripture verse I was looking at up here. And I and, um, want to make sure I got it right. I have it in my heart. But the scripture says this. How do we, how do we rectify you know, the hunger and everything? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, that l word lust takes in a lot of different areas. You know, it takes in laziness, too. You know, uh, uh, oh, I don't feel like reading the Word. And it, it's uh, just like you said. I'm going to get my Facebook. I'm going to look at Facebook first. Right. And you find out you're going through Facebook, and you're spending an hour there. Right. And Jesus right. said... Could you not tarry with me for one hour? Right, exactly. You know, way back. <laughs> exactly, way back with the disciples. Yeah. They, he says, stay here and pray. Mm -hmm. And he comes back and sees them asleep. Uh, and it's so easy for that to happen because we allow Satan to jump yeah. in and take a foothold. Yeah. But as far as sitting down and reading, I, there are many Christians are in the world right now. And they say, you know, I've read that Bible back and forth, left and right, and I know what it says. I know what it says. And... And the Holy Spirit will bring everything to remembrance yeah. and all that. And they will say one thing after another. I go to church, like you were saying earlier, and, and I do this and do that for the church and all that. You know, it, to obey is better than sacrifice, okay, yeah. for one thing. The other thing is, is that 
why are you doing all of it? Is it just for your self-gratification? Or is it actually to learn it, to go out and share it, mm -hmm. and share it, as the Great Commission says, you know, to share it. I cannot imagine mm -hmm. myself want, going one day without saying something to somebody. Uh, and walking by them, I get, I get made fun of. Uh, quite a bit because sure. I'm always saying sure. hi to somebody walking down Walmart aisle yeah. or Hy-Vee or something. Yeah. Everybody's saying, why are you talking to them? Well, they're not even smiling mm -hmm. back or anything. And I said, you know what? The Spirit of God goes out of me. It's <clears throat> going to plant a seed somewhere. Yeah. And you know what? You probably found this. is the same thing that I found out. Found this too. Because of who we are, people will avoid us. Right. We don't right. have to shy away from them. They'll shy away from us That's because right. of the That's Spirit right. of God. That's right. Oh, here comes that preacher. Right. You know, I don't want to talk to him now. Right. Why? Because of guilt, right. shame, right. knowing that there's some sin going on that they're, I'm not ready to give that up yet. Sort of Just like I would pull to the scripture that John 3:20, for everyone that doeth evil hates the light. Yeah, Neither are. cometh to the light, lest his yeah. deeds should be reproved. Yeah. And they don't want to come to that light. Yeah. And and they know that if I talk to that pastor, <clears throat> and Satan is the biggest deceiver and oh the my. accuser of the, uh, the, brethren, oh, the brethren, he is. Yeah. He's a deceiver. And he's going to do everything he can to deceive people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking just about the lost. <clears throat> I'm talking about the people that are in the church. Yeah. And I don't like to <clears throat> lay blame on anybody at all. But I will say this. Pastors need to stand up in their church and say, look, we are all called. Yeah. We are all called. We're not just yeah. called to sit in here and just fill up right. and get fed and get fed and then and go, go home and yeah. sit there in front of the TV. Yeah, right. We're here to be fed. Yeah. And sure, we're growing in Christ and getting to know Him more, but we're fed yeah. to go and do the work of God. Yeah. And here's a verse that's coming to me well, along with that to help to verify that, that we are to go out and because it, it helps us to be the overcomers. Right. It helps us to walk in the Spirit right. so we'll not fulfill the lust of the right. flesh. And how, and, and how are we overcomers? Mm -hmm. By the word of our testimony right. and by the blood of the Lamb. Right. right. You know, and, and we're overcomers by, and God gets all the glory. Right, right. And yeah. that's, that's the point I, I'm glad you made about yeah. God getting the glory. Yeah. Because within the church, you'll see they're saying that, well, this guy's doing it better than I am, or I'm doing it better than he is, and mm -hmm. all this. And the disciples fought saying who's going to be first in the kingdom and, right and That's the corinthians right. paul talked in corinthians about them mamas disputing. wanted to make sure they were all right yeah. and corinthians paul disputed they disputed mm -hmm. at, at uh, church of corinth about who don't be puffed up one yeah. another right uh yeah. i that's one of the th issues that happen a lot. But if uh, in a church they're saying, well, he's, with, he's ministering better than I am. He has better words than I do. And let him do that. And, all, and I'm jealous of him, envious of him. Mm -hmm. If your heart and soul are totally surrendered to God, we're going to be all on the same page. Amen. Well, let me stop you. Okay. okay. How do we get on the same page? Because I'll tell you what, yeah. Brother Martin. I want you to look at camera three. I want okay. you to talk a little bit to the people here. Let that evangelist come out of you. You okay. know, let the spirit of God, you know, speak through you because there's those out there who maybe have lost their hunger, right. and maybe they haven't really confessed their sins to the Lord Jesus. Just look in camera three and talk to them. First off, first off, I'd like to talk to the lost out there. That's my main concern. I, I just want to say. If you are lost, now is the time. Now is the time to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul told us in Romans chapter 10, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's clean, cut, and dry. Yeah. God wants us to be His child. Uh, he wants us to be His children. He yes. is, wants to adopt us. Yes. He wants us to be saved. He didn't condemn us. He loves us. You may think you can do everything in this world on your own. And you said, I've got it made. I can make this money. I can take care of myself and do this and do that. But once you get down in that ditch and you have no other place to look but up, you're going to realize, I need God. Yeah. I need God. And I beg of you now, please turn your life over to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and make him Lord of your life. Confess your sins and give your life to him. Mm -hmm. Now, to the people that are 
Christians, I challenge you, as I've challenged pastors before, you need to step up to the plate and realize that we have a mission to do in this world. The days are getting shorter. They're getting shorter. We're in an apostate state right now. The apostasy is coming. There's signs of the times. We don't know when he's going to return. We don't know. If, you gave, if I gave you five seconds and you were the only one left in this whole world that knew that he was coming back in five seconds, what would you do right now? Now it's only two seconds left. Now you got one second. What would you do as a Christian? My first choice would be tell everybody I can, go shout it on the rooftops. If they don't come to us, we need to go to them. Yeah. Go into the highways and to the byways. I had an event late last uh, a while back to where I was giving out free Bibles and free tacos to people just so they could come to Christ. And I'll tell you right now, if, if they don't come into the church, if they don't come to see you or talk to you, we need to go to them. Mm. We need to go to them. Mm. But you need your heart set right on God. Yeah. Surrender your life to the Lord Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's getting outside of the four walls of the church. Yes. yes. You know, we are all ministers, all evangelists. Of course, there, there, there's this specific, mm -hmm. what he had called in, in here in, in talking about <clears throat> uh, pastors and evangelists and prophets and apostles. There, those are the specifics, but we're all called yes. to do that. And we're I tell you, um, it, it is a joy to reach out for the Lord Jesus Christ. As, and, and we prepare ourselves by <clears throat> being in the Word. And if you know me, you know that I push and I tell everybody what I like to do is use the one-year Bible so I can be con consistent through the Bible throughout the year. The one-year Bible will take you through the Bible in a year. And I tell you, it's exciting to read and let God talk to you every day, to read the Word of God every day. And it is that it does build you up and it exhorts you. You can do what I do. You know, when I'm reading my Word, I get myself a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. <laughs> talk to God first a little bit. And then prepare myself, Holy Spirit, show me what God wants to say to me out of His Word. And um, there, there's nothing like serving the Lord. And uh, if you need to come home, just like Brother Martin said, come on home. Come on back. Because there's people that won't get to know the Lord unless you do it. And uh, that, it's, just, it's just that simple. I'll tell you, Brother Martin, it's exciting to do the work of the ministry. Yes, it is. And I thank you so much for being around my table right. here right. and uh, uh, sharing this uh, gospel message. Hey, ministers out there, if anybody needs you to, uh, as far as bringing you into church to speak, you know, we can do that. So thank you for being here with me. I tell you, the, the presence of the Lord in programs like this, I... I just, I just love it. You know, I feel <laughs> exhorted and ready to go myself. God bless you for watching us out there and being with us. The Lord be with you. He loves you a lot. God bless. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301. So oh.